But I can tell you that uh, there's not going to be any water spraying. That's already been asked, so I'm not spraying water, but it's going to be good. This morning we're going to go into spiritual leash training. Y'all remember this scene on Rocky running up and down the stairs with his dog, getting ready for the big fight. And today we're going to talk about the same thing, how God trains us using the leash. And not in a way that you would think in the belly, but in a way that we need. So we're going to look at that this morning. And our first text, I'm going to be all over the place in the Bible, but the main text this morning I'm going to take, take from is going to be Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. If you would, stand in reverence to the Word of God, please. In Hebrews 11, 1. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, and the conviction of things not seen. The assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray this morning that you'll just be with us. You'll be here this morning. You'll come in your presence. We'll just anoint this place, dear Father, that everything we say and do this morning will be for the glory of you, dear God. Lord, just move me out of the way and preach this message the way you see fit. And Lord, just Watch over and protect everyone here this morning, dear God. So, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings. And, Lord, we just ask that you be with us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to introduce you all to Dixie. This is my little baby girl, Dixie. Now, she's going to be my assistant this morning. Because, guess what? She's in the middle of leash training. She don't like the leash. She don't like it. She's not a fan of the leash. She likes to try to fight it. But we're going to look at some of that this morning because we're going to look and see what is the purpose of a leash. What is the purpose of a leash? When we look at it, it's to direct, train, lead, protect, and even discipline. You see? She doesn't like the leash very much. <laughs> but if y'all laugh and cut up, she'll, she'll talk to you. She does. And she's in the middle of, my, of training, so we're working with her. But that's one thing we have to do. When we look at how God trains us, how we're trained spiritually, there's a leash on us. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, that God's trying to control us. No, but the positive aspects of a leash. That's what I want to look at it today. It's not in a way of bad. I'm not doing anything to punish Dixie, but I'm doing it to protect her, to direct her, and to train her. To what you see there, you see when I said this morning, what was that first scripture? Faith, right? See, Dixie has to have faith in me because as her trainer, she has to know that I'm not going to put her in harm's way. You can come up here, Mina. You can come up here on the front row and sit with Alyssa. If you want to come up here. But she has to put faith in me as her trainer that I'm not going to put her in any danger. But she doesn't know danger. Now, last night when we was out walking and the neighbor dogs went to barking, she got a little scared. <laughs> but she doesn't know what danger really is. So, but we can see danger ahead of them. See, she gets happy when she sees little kids. And she tries to fight the leash. It's just like we do in our Christian walk. We fight that leash, don't we? Amen. We want to go in a different direction than what God's leading us to. So we look at the first thing. is I want y'all to see something because this is the main deal of why Jesus came. Everybody, you know has looked at it and thought about, you know, what was Jesus' purpose? You know, he came to fulfill the law. But when he fulfilled the law, he expanded on the law. The law was the Ten Commandments, right? Back then, the Ten Commandments was actually in physical act. It was a physical act. You know, now we look at it, as Jesus said in the Old Testament, you know, he didn't come to abolish it. He expanded the law to include the spirit of the law. Now what that means, you know, it says thou shalt not murder or thou shalt not commit adultery. 
What did Jesus say? If it's in the heart, you committed the act. That's how he expanded on law. He actually, he tightened up that leash a little bit more to where we didn't have as much free reign. Because why? Now that there's a spirit aspect involved into it, it requires us to do a lot more thinking. Because if we commit, if we even think it, we've already committed the act. If you don't like the streets. But, you see, that's why it says he actually tightens the leash. Because that spirit aspect of it. So, today we're going to talk about that spiritual leash. We're going to look at it. How does that spiritual leash work for us? When we talk about direct, we go to the Old Testament in Proverbs. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. <clears throat> That's true. But you see, there's a key word in there. Trust. Trust. You see, that's another thing about this leash. Even though little Dixie, she wants to go play with the girls over there, she doesn't understand that. If this was the ledge that was 10 to 15 feet deep, all she just sees is somebody on the side she wants to go play with. She doesn't see that main drop right there. So that's my portion where she has to understand there has to be a trust. That we have to trust that God's going to lead us in the right direction. Amen. There's a trust. But you see, that trust comes with us submitting ourselves to Him. You know, and for us to find that trust, we have to first submit. We have to submit to Him. The only way to submit is to by totally turning it all over to Him. We turn it all over to Him and we let Him make, make our path straight. Because in other words, if we didn't, then whose path are we on? Ours or His? Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You know, whose path are we on? Because when it comes down to it, what do you say? My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, when we think about it, our path, we think our path is the right way. But it's not until we let God in our lives that's when our path is straightened. That we get it, we, we get to the area where we need to be. Next we see train. Now this one right here, we've all heard this scripture. Train up a child in the way he will should be should go and he will not depart from it. Now, the key word in that one is train, not teach. Not teach. Too many parents today, too many people today want to teach and not train. There's a huge difference between training and teaching. Big difference. You know, main main difference is you can teach somebody all day long a textbook. But until you actually go out there and show them how to do it, and you show them how to do it, they're not going to know how to do it. You know, it's just like fishing. You can tell them all day long about how to fish, how to set a hook, how to tie a knot, how to do this. Until you take them out there and you show them how to cast and how to properly set the hook in the fish's mouth. They're not going to know. That's the thing. we got to stop teaching. Well, how do we teach today? In today's society, we want to fight that leash. We don't want to listen. We want to go our own way. We don't want to listen to the trainer. We want to just do what we think is best. What do we do? We listen more to Google than we do the Bible. You think I'm lying? I watch a lot of these vet shows with the listener. And one of the common things I've seen is some of these people said, well, I tried this. Google said do this. And the doctor's like, you need to call us first before you listen to Dr. Google. Because sometimes Dr. Google doesn't know everything. And that's the thing. But we will listen to Google more than we would the Bible. Why? Because we think Google knows everything. But they don't. Google cannot answer 
the question, are you going to heaven or hell? Google cannot. Cannot answer that question for you. Amen. Only you can answer that question. Google cannot train you. It can give you the resources to teach yourself, but it can't train you. You see, we've got to train the kids. Train up people. Train up younger Christians. God trains us. How does he train us? He trains us by putting us into those fires. We get put in situations to where we we have to learn. We have to learn from it. You know, how what's the best way we learn from our mistakes? By making them. You know, it's just like I could tell my kids, don't do this. This will happen. And sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't, and they find out the hard way that, yeah, this is going to happen. You play with fire, eventually you're going to get burned. I found that out the hard way the other day again. When we was working on lessons forward. So yeah, but we train, not teach. Today's society, how do we teach kids? Here's a tablet. Figure it out. Here's my credit card. Go buy what you want. We just teach them by throwing money at them. We don't spend time with them. We have to train them. What does it take to train? Train takes time with a person. Amen. It makes you get down and spend time with somebody. It's just like little Dixie here in this leash. In order for me to train her to get used to this leash with it again, means I have to take time. She has to get used to it. She has to get used to me. And she has to eventually submit. She, her will has to break. And that's the way ours is with God sometimes. You know, we fight that leash. But until we come to him broken, until our will is broken, that's when we'll submit. And eventually, over time, she will too. With his patience and training and love, she'll get used to it. But you see, that's how we have to be. You know, somebody told me the other day, you must be praying for patience. Because everything was kind of going crazy for me. And everything was just not act happening the way I wanted to. But, you know, it just, they said, well, did you pray for patience? I said, no, but I guess God's giving me patience. He's teaching me patience. And it is. Sometimes we have to learn patience in order to learn that lesson. And sometimes that lesson is patience. Amen. How do you learn it? By going through it. But you see, can you teach patience to someone? Can you train someone how to be patient? Well, but if you work with them time after time after time, they will eventually become patient with you. Just like she is right now. She'll come pa become patient with me. And she'll submit and just sit there. Until I move. Or until one of the kids throws another toy at her over here. Now, Charles Spurgeon, one of the great preachers of the old days, said, Train up a child in a way he should go, but be sure you go that way yourself. Amen. Now, that's the key. <clears throat> Too, <clears throat> excuse me, too many times we, we go through the philosophy of do as I say, not as I do. You know, that is the motto of parents, some parents today. Do as I tell you, not as I do. Well, what are kids? Kids are like parrots. They're going to mimic you regardless. You know, I was watching a deal last night on the History Channel about the, you know, at one point in time, the smartest you ever been was when you was first born. A newborn baby's brain. There are 800 different sounds out here in around us at any given time. As adults, we generally hear about 40. But a baby can hear all 800. Their brain, all of every cell in their entire brain is, is responding. They're absorbing everything. They're taking in everything. And well, what we hear as babble is not babble. That baby is saying one word over and over and over till it perfects it. And it keep babbling it until it perfects it, until it hears the correct sound of it. And you're like, when you say mama to the baby, that baby babbles back. Until that baby hears mama, it's going to keep going through all them sounds until it finds the right one and perfects it. 
the smartest we ever was was when we was first born. But you see, when we think about it, how can we take that child that's so smart as a kid, and when we raise them up, how can we tell them to do as I say, not as I do? They're constantly learning. How do they learn? They learn by seeing. They learn by doing. By hearing. You know, the kids are always watching us. Young Christians are always watching us older Christians. Amen. You know, this isn't always about children. This is about the Christian life. How are we living our lives for the Christians around us? How are we living our lives for them? Lead. We see in Romans 8, 14, it talks about the children of Christ are led by the Spirit. It says the true children of God are those who let God's Spirit lead them. That's the key. Who are we led by? Are we led by the Spirit of God? Or are we trying to lead ourselves? And see, little Miss Thing here, she's got it comfortable. She wants to lay down. She don't want to get up and do anything. But, you see, that's the thing. Sometimes, as Christians, what if we, we do just like Dixie here. We get lazy. We get complacent. We just lay there. The Holy Spirit tugs at that leash. Come on. Come on. What do we do? We just lay there. I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the church roll. I sing in the choir. I go to church. I sit on the pew. I become lazy. And we just sit there. All the while, the Holy Spirit is tugging at that leash, trying to get us to move. Trying to get us to move. And we don't want to move. We don't want to get up. We just want to sit there. But you see, those true children of God are those that are led by the Holy Spirit. Those that are on fire. Those that are willing to get up and go do. That are willing to say that I'm more than just a church member. I'm more than just a pew setter. Listen, I am not here to ask you to join this church. I don't care if you join the church or not. That doesn't bother me. Only thing I care about is where you go when you go. It doesn't matter if you're on my church roll or not. I could care less about a church roll. Sorry, Jill, but I don't care about that church roll. I really don't. It means nothing. It means nothing. I can have a church full of non-members that are on fire for God and I can have a church full of members that are lazy and complacent. It's not about the role. It's not about what you teach, what you sing, what you do at church. It's about are you on fire for God or are you lazy and complacent? But you see, that's the thing. Too many times, preachers and people in the church, they want to look at the, the membership. It's all about the numbers. How many people have I baptized this month? How many people have you done this? Yeah. How many people have joined your church? It's not about the numbers. I don't care if I baptize one person in my entire ministry for the rest of my life. It was worth that one person. Amen. It was worth it one. It's not about numbers. We have to be spirit led. We cannot be led by the man. Because when we start getting led by men, guess what? We get lazy. That little Dixie here. We get tired. We get complacent. We just want to lay down. We don't want to go do anything. But when we get on fire for God, then we get hyper. We get excited. Look at the book. Throw another one up here. And you see, also the leash is to protect. Protect. When we start thinking about it, how does a leash protect somebody? Like I said earlier, if I know that there's a major cliff and she wants to go over there, that leash is going to prevent her. But when we look at it in a spiritual aspect, it says God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. 
Now, the Old Testament is full of scriptures like this, and that's why I love them, because there's so many things back there that remind us that we have to trust in God. Amen. Trust in Him, not to fear. He's there to protect us. I mean, when you look at what David was going through when he wrote a lot of this stuff, he was on the run. You know, his life was threatened all the time. But he trusted in God to protect him. He trusted that God would watch over him. He would, he would not be afraid. You know, that's the thing that we want to look at today. What are we afraid about? What are we scared of? What do we fear? Why do we fear things? Why? We fear man because what? You know, I said it last Sunday, and part of last Wednesday night was that uh, when we look at fear in churches, why is there fear in churches? Well, you know, people capitalize on it. They capitalize on fear. I want to come to your house, and I'm going to make you so afraid that you're going to join the church. Yeah, it happens. People have done it. If you don't do this, you're going to hell. Okay. I've heard it. You told a lie, you're going to hell. <clears throat> but the thing is, we, we we got to get rid of fear. Because guess what? What does the Bible say? Christ did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. Amen. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. If God didn't give us that spirit of fear, who did? The devil. That, that other side of us that wants to keep us afraid of everything, to make us scared. Because the devil figures that if he can make you scared or something, guess what? You'll listen. You won't want to do, you won't want to do what's right. And sometimes you want to fight the leash and bite it too. But you see, God protects us by that spirit of love. By the spirit of love, not of fear. And that's what we have to look at. We have to look at it as the spirit of love. And that's the one thing here with Dixie is that she has to understand that as her trainer, oh, I'm sorry, girl. As her trainer, she knows that I still love her. <laughs> that even as the leash is training is, is done for the day, that she knows that I still love her. And she has to understand that. So we see that, that who is the protector? But how do we let God run our lives? Do we let God train us? Do we let God lead us in the way we're supposed to? Is He going to truly really trust Him to protect us and take care of us? You see, that's where we get to the next one. Discipline. You see, sometimes that leash is for discipline. When she tries to potty inside, instead of outside, like she's supposed to put on a leash, to help her understand that it's, it's a tool for discipline. She knows that when this leash is on it, it means business. That's what it means. And sometimes you give them a little bit. Sometimes you got to tighten the leash. You see, and, it's, and this is where we see the scripture. All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. See, the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is a story of how to have a relationship with God. Amen. And it also tells us that through that relationship with God, God will help us live a better life. He will, give, he will guide us in the way that we should live our lives. He will direct our path. And sometimes that requires him to tighten a leash on us. Because we keep straight too far. And we don't want to stay by his side. But you see, the Bible is not just any other book. The very portion, the very first part of this deal is that all scripture... Is breathed by God, breathed out by God. King James Version says, "All Scripture is inspired by God." Man wrote the Bible, but where did they get the words from? Amen. 
that God inspired me and gave them the words to put down on paper. And that's where the words come from. They were the inspired word of God. They were completely, so that they would be completely equipped for every good work. And the question I leave y'all with today is how are you leading others? How are we leading others? And who's leading you today? That's the thing. Who's leading you today? Because when it comes down to it, when you lay your head down at night, did you do everything you could that day for God? Who led you that day? Did God lead you? Or did man lead you? That's the question. Are you submitting to the leash? Are you fighting that leash? You know, because we fight it all the time. Why? Because we want to go back to our old life. Back to our life. And God's sitting there saying, no, trust me. Narrow is the path. Narrow. It's a hard road to live in life as a Christian. It's not an easy road. But it is a road with great reward. Great rewards. And that's the main thing. Are we letting God lead us so that others see God leading us? Or are we letting man lead us and others see that? Remember, this message is not for parents. That's just as far as Christians. Amen. Has been Christians for all these years and claim to be Christians for all these years. Who's leading you today? Let us stand.